Primary school children in Bristol are becoming more aware of challenges facing our planet thanks to the work of one university. We visited the University of the West of England to find out why they feel it's equally important to develop solutions to combat threats to biodiversity and destructive bacterial diseases while taking their research into classrooms to inspire the next generation of scientists. Rainforests are being destroyed to keep up with a rising global demand for palm oil in everyday foods, soaps and cosmetics. This deforestation is linked to climate change and a dramatic loss of biodiversity. Oil palm is such a massive issue, it could totally tip the balance in terms of global extinctions. Think about the orangutans and the large animals that have suffered in Southeast Asia. If that's allowed to happen in Africa and in South America as well, then it's going to have a massive global impact in terms of biodiversity. Dr Farnan Elwood's research at the University of the West of England want to use one small plant, the bird's nest fern, to return native biodiversity back into the heart of these disturbed ecosystems. Systems. The plants will help species which can live in the oil palm plantations to thrive. We work on plants which are called epiphytes and these plants simply perch on trees. The fern always remains detachable so here's a fern that I can just pluck off and take to an oil palm plantation and then you could put them back in the tree and suddenly we've just transplanted the animals such as the wood lice, the cockroaches, the earthworms and all of the microbes such as the bacteria and the fungi and this will help to transplant the function, the, the sort of nutrient cycling, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle. Josie Phillips is a PhD student working to document rainforest biodiversity before it's lost to palm oil expansion. She focuses on the benefits that native biodiversity can offer agricultural ecosystems. So essentially we are trying to find out if you can, you can seed degraded habitats with rainforest species by, by taking them in these sort of protection pods. The results seem conclusive that ferns that have come from the rainforest with rainforest biodiversity, when you put them into a plot with other ferns which have been emptied of their inhabitants, you tend to see rainforest animals moving across the landscape. The big question is now, on, on what kind of scale can we see this working in, in the long term? In the university's Envirotron, Professor Don Arnold's focus is another global issue, improving sustainable crop production. One way we can increase food production is to stop losing it. My group focuses on a disease of French beans called Pseudomonas syringae pathovar phasilicleros. We like to call it FAS. The bacteria can evolve, change, develop and cause disease and you lose your crop. The idea is to learn how it's overcoming resistance, maybe to develop better resistant cultivars, maybe to develop chemical controls, or sometimes even just husbandry methods. Don's research is also being used to teach kids about cutting edge science. Called hands-on science, school children are learning how bacterial pathogens evolve to overcome plant host resistance. This class are using what they've learned about genetic coding to build different sorts of robots. The point of hands-on science is to inspire the next generation of scientists and it starts right here in the classroom. We're going to split these letters in three. So our activity is building a Lego robot. We're using the genetic code. So they have a genetic code, which they break up into codons, three letter DNA bases. They then use a correct codon table, just as if they were a geneticist, apart from our codon table has Lego pieces rather than amino acids. They then read that code and follow the table to build their Lego robot correctly. And by doing that, we can show them that a small change in the sequence, the DNA code, can have a big impact on what their robot would look like. And hopefully they understand that that small change can have a big impact either for plant disease or human disease. It's important, these kids are going to be our future scientists, they're going to be our future policy makers. I thought it would be really hard to do, but it's not as hard as I thought. I don't actually know what type of scientist I'll be, but I might give it a go when I'm older. UWE's hope is that in sharing its solution-finding research with local children, they'll be creating the next generation of scientific problem solvers tackling the globe's biggest issues.